everybody. It's Christy and Wes back from 180 Digital. Uh, we wanted to look at our next blog article, one that was pretty popular this year, um, this past year. You know, we all dealt with COVID. And so um, we wanted to kind of kind of reflect on and also move, look forward to some of the changes that happened within churches due to COVID. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of lessons that, that can be learned. We're going to just kind of walk through a few of those lessons that we think a lot of churches learned um, and how, um, you know, some of those lessons can be carried into the future. So I'm going to start start us off. Um, we, we put this blog article out last May, um, so over a year ago. And like I, like I mentioned, it was it's been pretty popular all year long. Um, I believe it's one of our most popular um, blog posts. And um, I think there's a lot to be learned here. I think there are 10 um, things that we mentioned, but what, what do you think? What's the one that stands out to you most, Wes? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of things. Um, you know, what, what a year we had to endure um, and what, what, what unusual circumstances led to that. And I think the church uh, adapted because we had to. And one of the ways that I, I, uh, I'll, I'll say I just kind of loved uh, seeing people adapt to was the idea of just how to connect. And that changed so dramatically because we're so used mm -hmm. to being in the room together. And now all of a sudden we can't be in the room together. So how do we connect? And I just was so impressed with the churches that were able to just jump on board, start small groups online quickly. Uh, you know, they, they jumped in or, or were already live streaming their services um, and even some, I know a few, you know, churches that were just having game nights, you know, on uh, just through their small group or other ways, just for allow people to have that interpersonal connection. And I think it really showed us, kind of as we pointed out in the article, that connection can happen in so many different ways. We're so used to doing it one way, but it can happen in other ways. And it's good for us to explore other ways that we can connect with other people. And uh, I know, I'm not sure how familiar you are with this, but just kind of in the gaming world, you know, there's this thing called Twitch, which is an online gaming platform where people stream. And it really has been amazing. That's existed for years now. People have been connecting yeah. online using, you know, things like that around gaming. But as a church, you know, we haven't used, utilized tools like that to be able to connect kind of uh, online versus, you know, in person. So I was really excited to see how that, that changed over the year. Uh, and churches started to begin to do that more and more and more. Uh, and now it's a regular part of what they're doing. So, yeah, I think, um, I think that it's interesting because I think a lot of people were kind of split on this. A lot of people were like, yes, we can go watch church online and, and it's going to be okay. And that, that really was so great and so necessary for churches to be able to survive this past year. And I think that, um, you know, moving to online, if you weren't already online, really was a struggle. And so to see, I mean, well, I know that you helped a lot of churches, um, you know, because that's who you are, because you, you like to help churches. And, and um, I know that a lot of churches did struggle, but there were, as you mentioned, a lot of churches that were already able to stream their services online. So then it was, it's not just, it was the flexibility to move other things online too. It's not just the streaming of the services, but because there was no human human interaction for so long for so many churches for so many states around the country um it was what else can we do to make sure that people aren't falling um you know falling into depression or you know make sure that we're still staying in contact with each other and i think that that it, it became a really um an important um struggle to tackle and to really come up with solutions for and i think a lot of churches came up with some creative solutions which um, I, you know, what I really liked seeing, and I, we didn't mention this article, and maybe we'll write um, in the future about some of the things that we're looking back at it now is seeing that so many churches were helping each other too. So there was, a, was yeah. there was connection amongst um, church communities, uh, different churches helping each other, which I thought was really great. Um, but I would say the flexibility, um, I did mention the flexibility that you would need in order to get through this. Um, I would say flexibility became super key because I mean, it was, gosh, I remember it was like, one day everything is going to be fine. And literally like a week later, it was like, everything's going to shut down for, yeah. you know, you know, at first we, at first we thought it was very temporary. And so then it was like, well, maybe we don't jump into a full plan. Maybe we just, you know, um, halt church for this Sunday. Maybe we just halt church for two Sundays. And then as things kept still not knowing what was going to happen, the uncertainty of everything for, I mean, goodness, it, it did seem to drag on, right. The uncertainty yeah. element. 
And and I'd say even today, there's a little bit of uncertainty in, in some communities and with, amongst some people on whether or not they feel comfortable. Um, and so the uncertainty of it really forced a level of flexibility that I don't think any church has ever seen. I don't think any organization has ever had to had to go through. So I think that 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 looking at flexibility as something that is part of your plan, like what what all can we do in within our church that can remain as flexible as possible, and what you know, how can we get it to be as flexible as possible? I think that has become, and I think I mentioned, it's like a new metric for a neighborhood church mm -hmm. really um, is like, how flexible can we remain? How flexible can we always be? Because we never know. Now we know we, now we, know we won't know. So. We understand that we are in a reality where something like this could potentially happen again. And so mm -hmm. we need to have that contingency plan and, and, and be able to adapt. And I've heard people talk, whether we talk about flexibility or agility or adaptability, mm -hmm. it, it's something that is now being discussed regularly in churches yeah. uh, because we don't necessarily know what, you know, what, what could happen. And I think that's good for us. That's good for us to have a plan that if something like that were to happen again, that we can still continue to meet, you know, and I think the value of us uh, we all learned the value of meeting in person. You know, we talked about meeting online, but it made us really appreciate the the human, the physical connection that happens there. And we want to make sure that we're able to adapt no, no matter what what's happening. So, yeah, sure. Uh, one other thing I think was really interesting to me uh, was just the the need to understand that the church is more than just a service like you, you you talked about real quickly there about just watching live streams and and that's great when maybe it was a month uh and, and maybe month two but then when it started getting to to month three and four and five and six and now we're yeah. we're around in the bend you know people need more than just a service they need to connect online and what i loved i think that highlighted for us a, a dependency that that we've leaned too much into that just Sunday morning experience. What, you know, we call that Sunday morning experience. We've leaned so much into that, that maybe we've neglected those, uh, those connections that happen in small groups. And, and while that's great to do in person, you know, now we had to, to adapt to be able to do those online. And I think that will carry forth to kind of move into one of the other, other points you made there. I think that will carry forward into, um, uh, you know, into other ministries. So online is is a viable option now for any meeting that you have. Uh, everybody's learned how to use the tools that we had to use last year. So you don't necessarily have to meet in person. It's now an optional thing, not necessarily a required thing. So I think online will really find its way into youth ministry, children's ministry, whether that's just in planning meeting or in activities. Um, I think I'm really looking forward to see how that continues to grow because there's definitely some new opportunities for different types of ministries to happen. So I'm excited to see what happens with that. Yeah, one thing that, um, one thing I think, and maybe you'll agree is I think a lot of teams, a lot of, um, a lot of church leadership has realized like we, maybe our teams aren't big enough or maybe I can't do everything mm -hmm. by myself. Um, and so that, that's another topic I think that we'll be tackling pretty soon. Um, as well in an upcoming blog post, but we did kind of mention in this one, and I think that's I think it's an important thing to mention that that, that nobody can nobody can do it all, um, and yeah. and I think that you know pastors had to lean in as they should to their teams and and maybe even realizing where where there are people within a church that could step up to help too, and yeah. I think that um, I think that that's an important lesson that that's not, and I think you mentioned it too, like. You know, it's not just uh, the element of how are we taking care of the, the, the sermon today, but, you know, we got to kind of adjust our, our thinking about what does the church look like a little bit to some, for some churches, not all churches, you know, how can we, how can we delegate things to people so it's not all on one person? Because that, that I know got stressful for some churches when it was like, yeah. you know, um, especially, um, you know, some pastors, maybe if they have an older pastor who's not as familiar with technology, hasn't had to lean on technology. I know that was a struggle for a lot, a lot of churches. Um, so, you know, there's definitely a lesson to be learned on, you know, spreading out the, the, the requirements of what needs to be done and, and really delegating and, and creating a strong team within your church. Yeah. I mean, I talked with many pastors, some of them were really starting at ground zero. They didn't even have a Facebook page. They were trying to figure out how to do Facebook Live, you know, with an iPad. I mean, it was it was really, you had churches that were in that group, and you had ones maybe who already had developed some of those ministries and volunteers. And I definitely think that the situation highlighted the necessity 
that you've got to surround your people or surround yourself with people who can help you. Um, because the reality, you know, the reality is do, being a pastor is hard. Um, it's stressful. There's so many things you have to take care of. It's so much more difficult now than it was even, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, there's so many more aspects to how people interact with your church now that they didn't then. It's more than what one person can handle. It absolutely is more than what one person can handle. So, you know, poor, put, put COVID on top of all that, and it becomes way more than what one person can handle. So having those ministry teams in place where you can lean into someone to come in and record a service or record or have your worship leader record, uh, you know, worship songs and then put that together to do an online service, you, you've got to have those. So if you don't have those, if you're not a church that has those established already, you know, it's definitely time to, to start working on that. Yeah. So um, I think we only have a couple more minutes, right? Um, yeah. For just a couple more points. I, I would say my favorite element to this particular blog um, article, but also for the future is, you know, how strong the church had to become and how strong we realized the church was. And I think that really kind of ties into um, the church is, is necessary. And, um, and we, you know, obviously we believe that we have God on our side. And so we're, you know, it's always interesting to, you know, looking at the Bible and looking at what's going on in the world. And, and there's a lot of things that we maybe could get down about, but we have God on our side and, um, we're going to spread the gospel come hell or high water, as they say. <laughs> right. So, um, and so I think that that was really inspiring to me this year. And I think that that is something that we can, you know, take forward to like, we're here to spread the gospel and we were able to, a lot, most churches were able to adapt to be able to spread it even wider than mm -hmm. we even originally imagined. And so I think that's probably a big positive that came out of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't really know how strong you are until you're, you're tested. And that was a, a testing for us as a church to understand that because the reality is, you know, there there were some some churches, honestly, that that didn't didn't survive COVID. There are some that that you know barely survived. There's some that thrived. Um, but having that that testing will make you stronger if you endure. I mean, that's a very scriptural principle there. That if you want to be uh, tested in order to grow our our faith and our strength. And so, uh, you know, I, I know that the church is stronger now than it was in 2019. I know that this church is stronger now uh, you know, than it was six months ago. So I'm, I, I think this has definitely been an opportunity for churches to flex muscles. Maybe they didn't even know that they had um, and to grow and understand what's, what's important in our ministry. Uh, because when all the programs and things go away, what is it that really makes us who we are as a church? So I definitely think uh, we learned a lot of lessons last year. Um, nobody wants to have to go through that again. Nobody enjoys that. Um, you know, people lost loved ones. It was it was definitely a trying time. But uh, looking forward to the future, I feel like God has uh, great things in store and will use 2020 in ways only He can uh, to really grow His church. So uh, yeah, Amen. it was definitely a definitely an interesting time. So it was a good to write this article and kind of reflect on those things. Yeah. Well, um, our, uh, our clients and uh, viewers and listeners um, can check out the article. We have them all on the 180.digital website. If you go to the blog, it's at the top. You can also find it at the bottom. You can um, subscribe. There's a place to subscribe right there in the footer of the website. Um, so you can actually get upcoming articles sent directly to you. So that's a, that's a nice feature. And um, yeah, catch up on the blog, read the whole thing for yourself if you have time. We kind of skimmed through some of the highlights, but there's plenty more in there that you can kind of take a glimpse of and, and look forward to some new content we'll be putting out. Yeah. All right. Everybody have a great day. <laughs> Thanks.